Hey, hello everyone. It's Rita from Miss Rita to the Rescue. How are you? Um, let's see. It is Friday before a 4th of July holiday and we are going into the holiday weekend doing some really fun things, including I have a pop-up uh, demo tomorrow that I'm going to be doing locally. If you are a local, come down and visit me at Culture House between 1 and 3. Um, and Culture House is on 59 Main Street across from Next Mex Thing and right next to the Peabody Main Branch Institute Library. Um, we also have date night coming up Saturday night at 7 o'clock. Depending on um, when some much-needed supplies come in, they were supposed to come in three, four days ago, um, we're either going to be making rhinestone templates with our Cricut or we're going to, as an alternate, we're going to make mega hanging stars out of paper from a, an SVG cut uh, project. So depending on who you are, I mean, where you are or what you, what am I even saying? Depending on what, you, what happens with my mail, um, we will be doing one or the other. Either way, it's going to be a lot of fun and we are going to have fun with our group. We have a great group of Cricut crafters. If you're new Please introduce yourself because our group is super welcoming and um, they often will just sort of make you feel right at home. Great group of people, very encouraging group of people. Um, we're going to work with the joy today. Oh, I love this machine. And we're also going to be working with our, with our mug press, which is a fairly new invention um, from Cricut. It makes the most glorious looking mugs. I've actually uh, given away a lot of my mugs and I haven't made mugs very uh, recently. So I promised yesterday that I would show people how to make mugs and also insert cards uh, with the joy. So I need a trial run. I hope you don't mind, but we're going to be repeating some of this process. I think it will be helpful for those that maybe weren't with us when the mug press uh, came out. This is still super hot, so I can't touch it, but this is one example of the mug press that I just did on the joy and then pressed with my um my mug press I have a lot of infusible ink it's surely saying she has a lot of infusible ink surely I think I probably beat you I have um infusible ink that's in the small box size that's perfect for the joy it's labeled as a joy product but then I also have boxes upon boxes of this big stuff I'm going to show you how to use the big stuff in the joy as well we're going to um if I if I can do it if I can find my joy pen for infusible ink which I don't see here um, we might be able to also write on one of the mugs but I might not get that done but um, okay so here's what we need here's what you need to make really beautiful professional looking mugs in like minutes uh, and this would be great for a present or perhaps as a I thought they'd make a great giveaway for a fundraiser and I think I'm going to use them next year when we have our green fest um, to remind people to recycle and curb compost and all of that stuff so you're going to need some infusible ink this does not work with iron-on um, if you are not sure if it's infusible ink you can tell based on the way that the paper looks but it I think does it also say on the back let's see 
uh, yeah, it does. It says infusible ink on the back. So it infusible ink is kind of like a paper on a plastic transfer. And what it is, you do not want to get it wet. Do not handle this with wet hands. Also, maybe not so much in a humid environment. Um, but what you're going to do is you're going to place this, the uh, plastic side down and um, we're going to cut on here. This is actually paper that's impregnated with ink. And then once you heat it up and apply it and you heat it up, it actually takes the ink from here, turns it into a gas, and then the gas lands on the mug and it creates a mug that is completely safe, harmless, all of that, but also um, never going to lose this decoration that it has on there. It's going to always look like this. This is a really a new invention for Cricut. They do make some others on the market that are not Cricut based. I've looked at them. They don't, to me, feel very secure, very safe. Um, because you have to put them in your oven. Um, and then there's also, you know, there's some that you, I guess you can make. I haven't seen those too much, but you can make them like as a wrap and on your iron. I don't know. There's other ways to do this, I guess. But to me, this is a pretty safe and easy way. And this is a great little project for young people. I mean, you have to keep them away from the heat, but they can design their own and, um, and put a mug, make it for Graham, all that other stuff, okay? So today is all about if you haven't um, purchased a mug press or maybe you bought one and it's still in the box, tis tisk, tisk um, how to get it out of the box and get it working right away. All right. We're going to use the joy to make our cutouts. Then we're going to use this easy, I'm sorry, easy press mug press. And today we're using my iPad to, um, to make designs. First, I want to talk about where to find designs. If you are using your iPad um, and you go to like this home page, you can type in mug and you will find oodles and oodles of mug ideas. And what's great about these are um, they also come in two sizes. The mugs themselves come in two sizes. Today we're gonna be using the smaller of the two size. Um, and it is a 12 ounce mug. Now, I wanna just cause you do not have to use Cricut mugs, okay, but they are very reasonably priced, um, in my opinion, and they're often will they're often on sale. So this is a twelve ounce one. You don't have to use a Cricut mug, but you can't just go to like Dollar Tree and buy one dollar mug and expect this to work. It won't work. This mug has a special like coating that's there to accept that ink that's turned into a gas. So if you are looking for something other than a Cricut mug, you need to make sure that it is um, sublimatable or it's sublimate or sublimate um, ready. Okay. And you can find that stuff like at at Amazon and stuff like that where you can sublimate on it, but it has to be that kind of a mug, okay? So um, so we're gonna need mugs. We're going to need these two things. Also, we need like a little heat press. We might need some heat resistant tape. And uh, I think that's it. So you can find a lot of mugs if you're just doing search here and you can just click on them. Now in the case where they have two different sizes, so for example, let me find one. Here's one. So here's one that has two different kinds. I love this. This is really cool. I actually have some mermaid um, some mermaid infusible ink we could try but this has two designs and down here where it says finish size we get the choice of the 12 ounce mug or the 15 ounce mug we have 12 ounce today so we're going to choose 12 ounce and then all you need to do from this point is hit make it now we're given the choice on mat or without mat for smart materials infusible ink is not yet i don't know but it's not a smart material so you do need to put it on a mat 
And when you do, here you go. See, these are both of our designs. Look at that. And um, you, generally speaking, have to get in the habit of making this mirrored. Um, it probably won't matter for this particular design, but I would tell you to get used to it and just kind of do it out of habit. So we're going to hit mirror and we have to do that on both of the designs. Did I hit that one? Yeah, okay. And you'll notice that it changes and that's okay. Once you hit continue, um, you are going to be asked what uh, material we're gonna use. So we're gonna use infusible ink transfer sheets. You can find that by going to all materials and under compatible, it's listed in iron on. So there it is, infusible ink transfer sheets. Since we are doing two mugs, I want to remember, and we're doing both in infusible ink, we're gonna, I want to remember that material setting. And this is just for me, but on the Joy, I like to cut the infusible ink with a pressure of more. If you find that you can cut it okay with a default, you don't have to do that. But if you want to adjust the pressure anytime, you just check off pressure and you can choose more, default, or less. I'm going to cut it on more because with infusible ink, um, I like it to get cut all the way through the paper and sometimes you just need that little extra pressure to cut through. So now we're all ready to go ahead and prepare our um, our infusible ink. So let me make a little room here. Actually, uh, uh, while we're we're cutting this, I'm going to show you how to cut the larger sheet. Okay, so this is a sheet that I cut from a larger sheet. It is slightly smaller than this four and a half inch mat. This is a joy mat, the long one, which you'll need. And you have to put it face up. So there's the transfer side. This is the side that has the ink. Um, and this particular one, it's okay. This is four and a half inches. And our mugs for the 12 ounce are only a maximum of 3.75. So this is going to work just fine. Um, if you're doing a larger mug, you won't be able to cut these at four inches. So um, I just caution you on that. So now that we've got it and we've got it on our mat, we're going to open the joy and we are going to see we have this all set up. So we are going to run this into the machine. Again, the, the uh, ink side is up and we've mirrored our image and now it's just making sure I have the right amount of product in there and then I'm just going to hit go and it will prepare and start to cut. I chose this sort of splatter paint um, for this one which I think will look kind of cool. It's got a lot of different features there. So it will cut out. So anyway, um, a lot of you got these, uh, I think it was called the Man Cave, Caveman Infusible Ink Set recently. And it had, um, it had a lot of infusible ink in it. There was also another infusible ink set that came out in, was it Christmas time? That had a lot, a lot of infusible ink. I think it was in the small box. And so um, you might have a lot of this hanging around. So I want to show you what you need to do. So just to, to start off with, these do come in the regular, this Joy packaging. This is Natalie Milan. I think that's what I did with this one. I think that's a Natalie Milan. Um, and so it comes with two sheets of four and a half inches by 12. It's perfect for the mugs. Okay, but if you have a lot of this hanging around, I want to just show you uh, what you get in here. To me, it's easier to cut this stuff down and I get more product out of it. So I want to let you know um, what you get. So here inside of this box, and I will just 
point out this particular box it's only this color sometimes you'll get a box that have that has like these stripey things here that means that there's more than one sheet in here if you look down here it says four and that means that you get four one each of red denim uh, one of the bandana and one of a gray. This is called Western Sweetheart. But this particular one is called Rainbow Triangles and it has two 12 by 12 inch um, sheets in there. So it comes in this plastic, okay? Um, and I want to show you when you open it up, this plastic is just to keep it from moisture in shipping or wherever you might be, um, you might be storing it. It does have this little, don't, don't eat that <laughs> silica gel. It gives you a little test piece of, um, of fabric that you can actually test the infusible ink on. It gives you some, um, butcher paper, which is useful if you're going to in do infusible ink fabric related projects. But we're doing um, the mug press, so we don't need that, in that uh, butcher paper, okay? So here we have two pieces, and they, they are rather um, rolled. And if you want, you can sort of roll them the opposite way to kind of take out the kink there. And um, that will work. I'm just afraid at this at this point of my machine sort of jamming. I had a jam earlier today. I'm so I was so surprised by it. Nope, it didn't jam. Okay, it's done. And then I can uh, show you how to cut these things. Okay. Hold on. I'm like a one-armed paper hanger here. Okay. So if you want to use these large sheets, you can get your handy-dandy personal trimmer out. Move over, guys. Ugh, does your, does your space look like this? Mine's always just madly strewn with stuff. We've had so many new things come out that it's just like worse than usual. Okay, so these sheets are, and I'll show you here, they are 12 inches by 12 inches. And so um, this works out great for our 3.75 mugs, right? Because we can cut these in four inch segments and get three mugs out of one sheet. All right, so we're just going to put it on the four inch mark and then run it through with that personal trimmer. And we have one. So in this case, the box has two sheets. And so I can cut these two sheets just like this and I will get six mug sheets to do with that. I think that's brilliant. And um, in the regular ones, you're only gonna get two sheets. So if you wanna save some money, just get yourself one of these personal trimmers and cut them yourselves, okay? So, um, and, and then you just insert them, put them on the mat. So here is our first one done. Taking it off the mat, let me move the mat. And you will see that there is this outline of for the mug. First, I'm going to just take off the actual outline like this. And it's paper. See how it's kind of like rippy? And here it looks kind of ripped. That's because that is ink impregnated on this paper. This paper, you don't, it doesn't actually dissolve onto the mug. It's just a carrier sheet, so to speak. So here is our cutout. I know it doesn't look like much, but what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be rolling this. I'm gonna do it at the end here. And I just like sort of rolling it like this. You do not need, you could try to use, but you do not need like a weeding tool for this. This is kind of satisfying. Um, and so what you do is just go there and just pull all of these cutouts right on off. Isn't that cool? So we're going to do that. Make sure you do them all. 
and just doing up here and make sure you get all those little pieces off because you don't want them to stay on for when we put this on the mug. This is, I think this is the very satisfying part, but maybe that's just me. Anyway, so we're just gonna keep doing this until it's done. Now I think that at the bottom, yeah, there's kind of like nothing at the bottom. So we just have a few more pieces to do here. Okay, almost done. Inspect your work. There you go, right? So this is just how it's gonna go on. This part is a little sticky, so you may or may not need uh, tape, uh, heat resistant tape for this, okay? But you are gonna need a mug. This is uh, the 12 ounce mug, as I've said, and it's helpful, especially if you live in a home, like I do, with a lot of pets. It's helpful if you take your lint roller and sort of lint roll around, even if it was in the box, um, lint roll around there because sometimes little bits of whatever, dust, debris, whatever, get on there, even if it was in the box. So that's a useful um, thing to do. Uh, then here we go. We're going to put this on. You know what? As I look at this, I believe that I actually cut this out. I mean, I weeded it wrong. I was supposed to leave this part on. Isn't that funny? I was supposed to leave um, the other part on. So what I'm going to do, because I make mistakes all the time, by the way, if you're new, you'll know that I make mistakes all the time, I guess, because I'm talking too much. Um, I am going to fix my mistake so that nobody except for you guys will know that I made that mistake. And it will just look like I, an artist rendering <laughs> artistic license, right? So I'm just taking off that little like handle piece like this which is okay we can use our um we can use our tape for this all right and we'll just snip it off there's even a little piece right here okay so we're all set what we're going to do is put it the face side toward the mug look at me I did this all wrong. <laughs> oh, I'm such a I'm such a loser. <laughs> okay, what I'm gonna do is put the face side down on this. I told you I haven't done this in a while, so I'm a little out of practice. But oh well, if you're new, you're gonna get a laugh, I hope. Um, and we're going to take my, uh, this is heat resistant tape that I put inside of a tape dispenser. Thank you to my friends who sent me the tape dispensers. They're in use. Um, but this is the first one that I grabbed this morning. I actually have three now, which is great. I didn't have any before. And I am just simply putting uh, this onto the mug so that it's very tight. You want a nice tight fit here because we're going to put it in the press and the press does give it some like uh, pressing because it's a press, but uh, it's a good idea to use the, the tape at least at this point point where these two sides meet. Now the mug, there is this one little space and my heat press, because I'm talking too much, my heat press keeps saying, are you going to use me or not? But there is a little space. This part does not go in to the press, okay? It just simply, um, it, it stands out. That's how you're able to pull it out without burning yourself. This is extremely hot. We're going to talk about it in a second. But I want to just finish taping, and I feel like this is not taped uh, as well as I want it to be. So I'm going to lift it up here and just pull it a little bit more. I'm laughing at myself, boy. This will be a very unique mug. That's the thing about um, 
about crafting with the Cricut. You have to make it your own, folks. And that's fine. So I'm going to just put a little piece of tape on the bottom there just to kind of give it um, that connection. All right. So now we have heated up our heat press, our mug press. All you have to do is press this one button and wait until it turns green. Mine's been on for a while. It does have an auto shut off, which is wonderful if you're the kind of person like me that leaves things on and walks away um, like me. So I do that with my iron all the time. So here it is. I'm all set to put it in. I'm going to put it in. You notice that there's this slat here, this opening, and that's where I'm going to put the mug. It just sort of uh, fits right in there. And then you're going to press down on this, the lever. Now, when you're doing that, make sure that your entire, um, and it's not, so... Mm. Make sure your entire mug design is within that little, um, within the press itself. The press is made up of a very heat resistant like plastic with there's like a foamy kind of a thing and it really hugs the mug. And you don't have to, like with the easy press, you don't have to say, um, watch the time, adjust the temperature. You just simply have to watch these little dots. There's five dots and as it presses, it goes on to the next dot. So it takes about three or four minutes for this to be done. And to be honest, what I would do if you have to make a lot of mugs, say for a holiday, is I would keep this going and keep cutting with your joy. That way um, you can have like a little production you make Henry Ford proud with your little production of um of mugs so let's do that okay and we are going to it's going to look very abstract my waves what was the other one that we had let's check the screen open this up and Oh, our tentacles. I think since it was just recently Pride Month, I am going for some uh, some rainbow tentacles. Let's do that. So again, I am going to put this in. I did choose Remember Material Settings, so it's going to remember that and push it in check to make sure that the mat is aligned and that I have enough stuff in there. I have my pressure on more and now I'm just going to hit go. And oh, I can't wait to see the tentacles. It's going to look really cool. So while we're doing that, we can kind of look over here. We've got three dots on here. If for whatever reason you'd have to like lift this, you can, um, but it will start over. So I had already had three dots there. So for whatever reason, if you had to lift it because you felt like it wasn't in there, I just wanted you to know that it will start from scratch. So you can um, then lift it out or you can let it go through the five uh the five levels. Now, if you're somebody who likes to do sublimation, we can do sublimation with the mug press. And we can actually also do some different kinds of mugs. Ones that um, Cricut does not tell, but you can find on places like Amazon where you can sublimate like the tumblers or the odd shape, like the travel mugs that go inside of your car. Um, you can do that with this. And actually didn't look at that it did not do that hey weird all right I'm gonna leave it in there just for yeah there we go 
Okay, sorry. Um, you can use sublimation. If you're gonna do sublimation or you're gonna choose writing to write with, you first of all, if you're gonna choose writing, you need to use the infusible ink pens, okay? So um, definitely use the pens to do that. And you will still need to um, mirror the writing. So you can do that pretty easily. Uh, in design space, but if you're having like a little one do it, then uh, when you mirror it, it won't look right. So it's best to actually just then just trace it using the bright pad and, um, and that way it will be mirrored if that makes sense. Um, so let's see, um, I'm, I'm really concerned that that didn't restart. I'm gonna take this out, might be too hot. Now, when you take it out of the mug press, it is very, very hot. I'm gonna turn it off for a second. It's very, very hot. Be careful where you put it. If you're gonna put it here, like on my workspace, I have these like uh, Cricut, no, um, they are like healing mats. They're made out of plastic material. And so the heat on here will warp like the heat from this will warp my base here. So I have to put it on something, whether it's a towel or whether it's, uh, you know, this easy press mat, this is the small one. I don't know what it is, like six by eight or something like that. And you have to let it cool. Of course, I am, I am such an impatient person that uh, I'm going to do something that I do not want for you to do I need this to stay on here, stay on there. And that is, I'm going to lift the tape so you can see what it looks like. Ooh, it looks really good, guys. Hold on. Take that tape off. Ah, look at that. That is cool. Definitely not the original design, but hey, pretty cool. It's also extremely hot, so be, be careful. Sorry, now with this, you know, also be careful. If you're having what I didn't do and I should have done, which was to tape this onto my mat. Sometimes the mats lose a little bit of their um, stick and you can wash these mats the same way we've been washing the other mats, but sometimes it's best to just use a masking tape and stick it onto the mat. So here is, ta-da, here is our Next one, which is the tentacles. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to take off the part around it. So here it is. All right. And over here, rip this off, I don't need it. Okay, now I have to be careful because I want to keep the tentacles on, right? So I want to take the background off on this, I think. Let me just check. Do I want to keep the tentacles on? Yeah, I do. Okay, so I'm going to start ripping the background off of this. It's probably better to do this kind of on a flat surface, but I'm going to try to keep it so you can see it in the screen, okay? So here I am taking off this paper, and it's pretty easy, you see, and it rips. It's not at all like in... Uh, iron-on material. If you're used to iron-on, it's not at all like that. So uh, it's more papery. So if you like paper projects, this might be, a, you know, a little more inviting for you. So I'm taking off all of this. Now there are little cutouts here I need to be aware of. So I have to keep a really good close eye on my 
project here. And this can be a little confusing if you're one of those left brain people. I think it's left brain. I don't know. This would not be confusing to my sister who is not a creative brain, but a, an organized brain. So I don't know what that makes makes her left or right brained. I think it's right, but I am the opposite, which I can tend to see things in the negative spaces. And that's what I'm trying to say. That's all right. So here I am, see, oh, this is gonna look so cool because I'm going to have a, um, a rainbow, oh, this is gonna look so cool, a rainbow tentacle mug. So cool. I like it, I like it. All right, so here we go. And I'm almost done. So I just want to check for pieces that I might have missed, like right here. I missed this part. Where does this go? Does this one get lifted up? Yeah. No. I messed up again. Don't, don't, don't. I messed up. Oh, well. You know what? It's okay to mess up because honestly, people, especially people who don't know too much about cricket, they're going to look at it and like, you messed up, what? So I know I've said this in the past, but I'm going to say it again. When you are making things by hand, it's important that you are not looking to make it perfect. There is no such thing as perfection with art or with handmade items. No such thing. Perfection may come in uh, machinery where it can do the same thing over and over, but it does not have heart on it. It does not have human um, interaction, and that is... For me, my little saying is, is it is a wabi-sabi crafting or wabi-sabi hobby, which means it's a, it's a Japanese term and it means that there's imperfections because it was made by hand. And sometimes they would actually put in imperfections. They'd be so good at their craft that they would put their imperfections in just for humility. I like to think I did that, but I honestly did not. I have imperfections because I'm pretty imperfect. So here we go. I ripped it here, but that's going to be okay. Let me move this out of the way. And I'm going to turn my mug press back on because it was behaving kind of oddly. And I'm going to take this one out. Again, it's a 12 ounce mug. I'm going to take my thing here and just make sure I take off all of the dog hairs that may have fallen oh. on it, which indeed does happen. And I am going to trim this up because it will overlap. Okay, here we go. So in this case, we want the tentacles to be as close to the bottom as possible. So that's what I'm starting off at. I'm gonna start at one side here and look, the tentacles, this one here goes all the way up to the top. And so we're going to continue to wrap this around like this. Now it's not completely on the bottom and that's okay. I am making sure it's all attached really well and this is like right at the very top and I'm just gonna sort of run my fingers my thumbs actually around it making sure that it is sticking to the mug okay but it's it feels like it's pulling up right here so I can then remove this if it's just kind of not right in a place, you can kind of remove it 
and go back and try again. Because sometimes even if you think it's straight, it's not straight um, and you can play around with it a little bit. Ooh, my mug press is ready to go. Okay. Here we are. Okay, so it's actually, because there's plastic and this plastic is like kind of like a tape, this is actually pretty well adhered here. Um, but I feel like, yeah, I think I don't need any tape there. The tape is sort of overlapping here, which will not affect anything, but we can cut it or snip it here if we need to. Okay, so see how it looks? The actual ink side is facing the actual outside of the mug. This is a special mug. It's a sublimation mug. You don't need to purchase the Cricut ones, but you do need to purchase the sublimation ones, okay? We're putting the ink side there. We're taping where we need to tape, and then we're all set to put it into the mug press. Here we go. And we are going to sort of, oh, our teddy bear is growling for some reason. He's a, he's so grumpy. All right, and then we're going to press it down. And I'm making sure that the handle is sticking out here. Don't try any fancy tricks with this. I've seen some people do some really weird things, like use shims inside of their machines to do sublimation, and honestly, not a great idea. And the woman that did do it, although very clever, um, blew out several of her mug presses and, well... That was kind of her own fault. Anyway, so there is my mug. It's actually, is it cool down now? It's actually different. It's supposed to have been the other way, right? But I like it. Um, I like it. You don't need to use the butcher paper, which is why the butcher paper no longer comes in the small box. But if you have a lot of butcher paper from your big box, keep it because you will need it for if you're doing sublimation or if you are doing your infusible ink pens on the um, on the machine. I'm trying to see. It's kind of late, so I'm not going to be able to show you the uh, pen on it. I just want to wait to show you this one. Hey, while I have you all here, until it... Um, until it's ready, you see I'm only at two lights. I have to go all the way to five. So until it's ready, let me just remind you that if you're not already following me on YouTube and you're not already subscribed to my YouTube channel, you should because it is a mecca of these same type of um, lessons. They're kind of like a chat lesson. You don't get to see the chat that went along with it, but you do get to see the whole start to finish tutorial on just about anything that's Cricut plus a few other things. So please, please, please consider signing up for my YouTube channel. You'll find it at Miss Rita to the Rescue, or you can also type in Cricut Chat. And I always put a link in the description of the product. Starting next week, we are doing our, what, April, May, June, fourth giveaway of our bundle of joy. We're giving away this great machine. I love this machine. And um, a bunch of stuff that you need to get started with it. And that I'm calling my bundle of joy giveaway. We do this once a month. So one lucky winner wins um, a bundle of joy and a bunch of other stuff. It's a $250 value. And guess what? All you need to do, all you're going to need to do is follow me on YouTube and Facebook and you'll be able to enter. Actually, you'll be able to enter every day for two weeks to win this um, this lovely prize of two hundred fifty dollars. In addition, we give out five, I give out five prizes worth fifty dollars to my followers.
followers each month. Um, some of them go to people who are active on my Zoom calls. Some of them go to people who are patrons on my Patreon page. And also some go to people that uh, are Facebook fans. It's a new thing where you pay $5 a month to support me and then um, you'll be entered into a drawing at the end for the for the month. Okay. So um, do all of those things. Follow me in all those places. It's It doesn't cost any money really. I mean the Patreon does, right? But I mean it's a good way to possibly win stuff and who doesn't want to win more product from Cricut and I want to thank my Cricut friends my my friends over at Cricut who are the providers of these gifts and um and they also recently um gave away several brand new makers and explorers the maker three explore three to a couple of my followers one of them um is Bren Jones she got a brand new I think she got a maker a maker three Bren did you get a maker three um and then there were uh, several other of my admins that also won um including Daniela uh, Trenko Shirley who's always on um and there are a couple other people that won brand new machines so it pays to follow people um and you can be following other people as well and still follow me and uh and learn 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 about how to run these awesome machines Thank you, everybody, for your participation. It really means a lot to me. Hey, we're almost done, so stick around. Oh, talking a lot today. So I wonder what you all are doing for the weekend. The holiday is on Sunday. We do have um, chat on Saturday night, so I can touch base with you all there. And we will have our Zoom call. We have a monthly Zoom call that's free to everyone. We'll probably have it in the middle of the month because of the holiday. So look for the instructions on how to participate in that one. Hey, it's done. All right. So to take it out, we just lift this up and we pull it out. We're only touching the handle, okay, because it is super, super hot, and let's turn it off because I'm not going to make any more mugs today. Okay, so it's super hot, but I know you guys have been watching. So I am just peeling away the tape. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I love it. I love it. Do you guys love it? Oh, awesome. Look at, look at this side. So I've got my rainbow triangle, uh, tentacle mug this is so awesome genius <laughs> i love it and this is the kind of thing you can do it's not just me doing it you know um it's it's something that you can do you can be a really nice uh artist and um make your own mugs and for whatever reason let's say you want to give one to your kid's teacher or you want to make one for your dad or you want to use one as like something to hold things like pens and pencils or a, a plant even you can do like a plant saying on here it is cracking good yes yeah, Shirley um yeah, so it's fun, very unique, and easy to do. The only caution that I would have with you is just be very careful. It is hot, um, and you do not want to burn yourself. So I hope you enjoyed this as much as I enjoyed it. Um, thank you for your support and for liking and sharing and doing all of that stuff. I really appreciate it. I really, really do. Um, I see uh, uh, my other friends, product experts, and they're like 100,000 followers or 200,000 followers. And congratulations to them. But I think, why not me? <laughs> so um, so let me... Uh, let let me know that you support me by following me, telling your friends and all of that wonderful stuff. 
Thanks everybody for coming today. I hope you have a wonderful holiday and we'll see you again. If you can make Saturday night, we'll see you again on Monday. I know that that's sort of the holiday for most people, but we're going to just pretend like it's a regular old cricket day and we'll be doing some other fun project uh, come Monday. So we'll see you tomorrow. If not tomorrow, we'll see you on Monday morning at 9 o'clock for Cricket Chat. Thanks, everybody. Have a great day and um, get some crafting in, okay? Take care. Bye.